$4.5 trillion. That's how much money Chinese investors just bet on a single company, a company most Americans have never heard of. And the man running it? He spent 14 years inside NVIDIA learning all their secrets. If you think you understand the chip war between America and China, I'm about to prove you wrong. Because while everyone's been watching TikTok hearings and tariff announcements, something far more significant just happened. And it's going to change everything you thought you knew about who's really winning this technology war. What I'm about to show you isn't speculation. It's not theory. These are hard numbers, real companies, and actual events that Wall Street is desperately trying to downplay. Because if the average person understood what just happened, there would be panic. Something happened last month that Silicon Valley doesn't want you to know about. A tech company you've never heard of just attracted more investment money than the entire value of NVIDIA. The CEO used to work at NVIDIA's China division for over a decade. He knows exactly how they operate. And now he's using that knowledge to build China's answer to American chip dominance. This story is going to blow your mind. While America's been celebrating its AI supremacy, China quietly executed the most aggressive tech comeback in modern history. And the craziest part? Every sanction, every restriction, every ban that Washington imposed actually accelerated their progress. We're witnessing something unprecedented, and most people have no idea it's even happening. Let me walk you through what just went down. There's a Beijing-based GPU manufacturer that just went public on the Shanghai Stock Exchange. The IPO approval took only 90 days, which is lightning speed for China's regulatory process. That tells you something right there. Beijing sees this as critical infrastructure, not just another tech company. When the subscription window opened, Chinese investors went absolutely ballistic. The demand was so overwhelming that bid orders totaled $4.5 trillion. Yes, trillion with a T. To give you context, that's larger than NVIDIA's current market valuation. On opening day, this company reached a $17.5 billion valuation while raising $1.11 billion in capital. Most semiconductor startups would celebrate hitting a billion dollar valuation after years of grinding. This company hit nearly 18 times that amount immediately. And here's the kicker. They've been operating under US sanctions since 2023. Washington tried to kill them. Instead, they thrived. The founder's background is what makes this whole situation fascinating. His name is James Zhang, and his resume reads like a masterclass in how to beat NVIDIA at their own game. After spending time at Hewlett Packard and Dell in the late 90s, he joined NVIDIA in 2005. For 14 years, he was instrumental in NVIDIA's China expansion. He understood their technology stack, their distribution networks, their competitive advantages. When he left to start his own venture in 2020, he didn't just bring knowledge. He brought credibility. Top engineers from NVIDIA, AMD, and China's major tech platforms followed him. Then the money showed up. ByteDance wrote checks. So did Tencent. Sequoia China joined the party. When you see that level of institutional backing from China's tech giants, you're not looking at a speculative bet. You're looking at a strategic national priority. Most people think NVIDIA's dominance comes from making fast GPUs. That's only half the story. The real mode is software, specifically something called CUDA. It's the programming framework that every AI researcher and developer has used for the past 15 years. Training AI models, running complex simulations, processing enormous datasets, all of it runs on CUDA. Here's why that matters. CUDA creates lock-in. Once you learn it, once your code base depends on it, switching becomes incredibly expensive and time-consuming. Industry veterans said building a CUDA competitor would require at least a decade of development. Jiang's company built their version, called Musa, in a fraction of that time and they made it compatible with NVIDIA's ecosystem. That means Chinese developers can transition to domestic hardware without rewriting their entire code base. The switching costs just dropped to near zero. The innovation speed is staggering. NVIDIA and AMD typically launch new GPU architectures every two to three years. This Chinese company has shipped four generations in four years. Their newest chips can handle trillion parameter AI models, putting them in the same league as cutting edge American hardware. Companies like DeepSeek are already using these chips for training advanced AI. Remember DeepSeek? They shocked everyone in January 2025 by releasing a model that competed with OpenAI's offerings, built on a tiny budget without access to top-tier American chips. That efficiency is now spreading across China's entire chip ecosystem. Jensen Huang runs NVIDIA. He's watched his company become one of the most valuable in the world. And recently, at a closed-door event in Taiwan, he said something remarkable. He called U.S. export controls the dumbest thing we've ever done, adding that America just handed China the best national mobilization mission in 50 years. He compared it to the Sputnik moment but on steroids. 
Then he made a prediction that should keep Washington up at night. By 2027, China will have more AI compute than the rest of the world combined. This isn't some random analyst. This is the CEO of the company that benefits most from American AI dominance. He watched his China market share collapse from 95% to nearly nothing almost overnight, and he understands exactly what's replacing it. A fully integrated Chinese ecosystem that doesn't need American chips anymore. On September 17, 2025, China's internet regulator issued a directive that changed the game. ByteDance and Alibaba received orders to immediately halt testing and cancel purchases of NVIDIA's RTX Pro 6000D chips. These chips were specifically engineered for China to comply with U.S. export rules. NVIDIA had designed them to fill the gap after earlier bans. Demand was huge. Companies wanted tens of thousands of units. NVIDIA's server partners had already started testing. Then China killed the entire deal with one announcement. By November, the restrictions expanded. State-funded data centers got new orders, remove foreign chips, or cancel pending orders. If a project was less than 30% complete, American processors had to be ripped out. China had invested over $100 billion in AI infrastructure, and they used that financial leverage to force a wholesale shift to domestic suppliers. The revenue numbers tell a brutal story. In 2024, NVIDIA pulled in about $13 billion from China, roughly 13% of total revenue. First quarter of 2025 looked solid with $5.5 billion in China sales. Then on April 9th, the U.S. government informed NVIDIA they needed export licenses for H20 chips going to China. NVIDIA had to write off $4.5 billion in excess inventory. H20 sales had hit $4.6 billion in Q1 alone, before the new licensing hit. By the second quarter ending in July, China sales hit zero, completely flat. The company estimated losing about $8 billion in H20 revenue due to export restrictions. Analysts calculated NVIDIA shipped roughly 1 million H20 chips to China in 2024, generating around $12 billion in revenue. That entire revenue stream disappeared in months. Other American tech companies face similar exposure. Qualcomm derived 64% of its 2023 revenue from China. Apple got nearly one-fifth of global earnings from Greater China. And Apple's supply chain runs through Chinese manufacturing. If Beijing tightens restrictions further, Apple faces both revenue loss and production disruptions. While American companies watched revenue evaporate, Chinese chipmakers exploded. Cambricon Technologies posted 4,300% revenue growth in early 2025 hitting 2.88 billion yuan, compared to a 530 million yuan loss the previous year. They turned profitable for the first time ever, with 1.04 billion yuan in profits. Goldman Sachs forecasts, Cambricon will ship 143,000 AI chip units in 2025, growing to 2.1 million by 2030. Huawei rolled out the Ascend 9210C, claiming it matches NVIDIA's H100 for Chinese market applications. Major players like ByteDance and BYD are already running tests. There's still a technical gap. Chinese fabs operate at 7 nanometer processes without access to extreme ultraviolet lithography, while Nvidia uses TSMC's 4 nanometer production. But China compensates with clever architecture and massive scale. DeepSeek trained their R1 model using about 2,000 Nvidia H800 GPUs for just $5.6 million proving that smart engineering beats brute force hardware. Gina Raimondo served as Commerce Secretary under Biden. She personally designed the chip export restrictions meant to cripple China's tech sector. Recently, at Harvard, she made a startling admission. She praised China's industrial policy, calling it amazing and stunning. She specifically mentioned Huawei. People in the government two administrations ago thought they were going to hobble Huawei. They came back stronger than ever, making incredible chips. She's acknowledging the strategy failed while somehow distancing herself from creating it. Yet her 2022 official statements promised to limit China's advanced chip manufacturing capabilities. Those statements are still archived on government websites. Scott Besant now sits as Treasury Secretary, managing fallout from a policy he inherited. Besant made his fortune reading markets and betting against bad government decisions. In 1992, he helped George Soros profit a billion dollars betting against the British pound. He understands how quickly capital flees when policy goes wrong. In August 2025, Besant announced what he called a unique solution. NVIDIA and AMD would pay 15% of China sales revenue to the U.S. government in exchange for export licenses. The Trump administration lifted bans on NVIDIA's H20 and AMD's MI308. Besant praised the arrangement and suggested expanding it to other sectors. One problem. 
China didn't buy. By August, NVIDIA reported zero China sales despite the deal being active. Then in December, Trump announced on Truth Social that NVIDIA could sell even more advanced H200 chips to approved Chinese customers if the U.S. took a 25% cut. But by then, Jensen Huang had already told investors the damage was permanent. Look at the sequence of events. Biden restricts chip exports. Trump tightens restrictions further. China responds by banning American chips from government-funded data centers. Then Trump opens negotiations to let NVIDIA sell more advanced chips to China. Wait, didn't China just ban American chips? This contradiction exposes who's really desperate. If you own NVIDIA stock, understand that China's decision here determines everything. If they allow new sales, the stock rallies. If they refuse, expect a major correction. All evidence suggests China is walking away permanently. Here's what's actually happening in Chinese manufacturing right now. Huawei committed to doubling AI chip production. Cambricon is tripling their output, aiming to deliver over half a million AI accelerators in 2026. The strategy is transparent. Flood the market with Chinese chips. It doesn't matter which brand dominates. Huawei, Cambricon, or someone else. The goal is ecosystem lock-in. This is exactly how NVIDIA conquered the world. Get customers dependent on your platform, and switching becomes prohibitively expensive even if better alternatives emerge later. But there's an additional strategic layer. Both Huawei and Cambricon manufacture at SMIC, China's answer to TSMC. China is building vertical integration from design to fabrication. Chip designers profit. Tech companies get cheaper domestic hardware. The manufacturing base strengthens. If TSMC ever refuses to produce for Chinese firms, SMIC provides backup. It's not a crisis today, but it's insurance against tomorrow's risks. Cambricon crossed a critical threshold in 2025. Profitability. Despite operating on thin margins, they're now making money. This profitability comes from exploding domestic demand combined with government subsidies. That means they can sustain competition with American chipmakers indefinitely, without burning cash. The entire Chinese semiconductor ecosystem is engineered for a prolonged battle. They're not hoping to win quickly. They're built to grind it out for years if necessary. America faces an energy crisis that could destroy its AI ambitions. Pew Research found data centers consumed 4% of U.S. power demand in 2024. That figure doubles by 2030. By decade's end, America needs approximately 430 terawatt hours just for data centers. Here's the uncomfortable truth. China has double America's energy generation capacity. Jensen Huang posed the obvious question. Our economy is larger, but without energy. How do we build chip plants, computer system plants, and AI data centers? America is simultaneously constructing chip fabs, supercomputer facilities, and AI data centers. Each requires enormous power. Someone pays for this build-out, and right now it's American consumers. Trade tariffs already pushed prices up 10 to 20 percent on consumer goods. U.S. electricity prices climbed almost 20 percent over five years. Data centers and crypto mining will push them higher. Consumers can reduce spending at retail stores. They can skip buying toys and electronics. But unless they're willing to work by candlelight, they need electricity. This is a non-discretionary cost increase hitting everyone. Jensen Huang made another revealing comment about comparative advantages. He noted that building a data center in America from groundbreaking to operational AI supercomputer takes about three years. In China, they can construct a hospital over a weekend. Their infrastructure velocity is extraordinarily high because they're actually builders. He warned against complacency, saying America maintains a multi-generation chip lead right now. But semiconductors fundamentally come down to manufacturing. Anyone dismissing China's manufacturing capabilities is missing the bigger picture. Chinese AI companies are simply relocating training operations overseas. Data centers in Singapore and Malaysia process Chinese AI models. This completely complies with U.S. export controls. Result? Chinese AI development continues uninterrupted. Alibaba's Quen and ByteDance's models now rank among the world's top performing large language models. Quen is even open source meaning global developers use it freely. This Chinese GPU manufacturer isn't trying to beat NVIDIA worldwide. NVIDIA remains an exceptional American company driving AI innovation globally. But this competitor is building something different, a parallel ecosystem where China doesn't depend on NVIDIA at all. That's why Wall Street should pay attention. The technology competition between America and China has accelerated beyond most predictions. U.S. sanctions intended to slow Chinese progress instead triggered Beijing's push toward complete independence. 
American companies lost revenue that funded their research advantages. China redirected over $100 billion into homegrown alternatives. The question isn't whether U.S. policy failed. The question is whether American semiconductor dominance was always more vulnerable than Washington believed. Right now, China isn't merely reducing American chip purchases. They're systematically eliminating American semiconductors from their entire technology infrastructure. Companies building this alternative ecosystem are attracting massive strategic investment from the world's most sophisticated investors. The unthinkable is unfolding in real time. What happens next shapes the global economic order for decades. Are we watching American tech supremacy begin to crumble, or will Washington course correct before it's too late? The clock is ticking.